everybody. This is Kelly Dixon coming at you with the Breaking Bad Insider Podcast. We're here to discuss episode 409, which is called Bug, and it was written by Moira Wally Beckett and Tom Schnauz, uh, and directed by Terry McDenna. I'm here today with my creator, Vince Gilligan. Hello. How are you doing? One of the writers, Tom Schnauz. Hello, Kelly. And our producer, Diane Mercer, who handles all of our posts. Hi, Kelly. So, what's the significance of the name there, Tom? There's a bug in the episode. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Now, we like that title because it sort of harkens back to the fly title from last year. Oh, yeah, and, that's And cool. the bug plays so prominently in this episode. Uh, Walt mistrusting Jesse and putting a bug on his car and uh, Hank looking at the evidence from the bug that he put on Gus's car. And so, so let me ask you bug this. Bug is all over it. I asked you this before <laughs> the podcast started, but I want to ask you, uh, you know, on mic now. Um, that really is a real device. You should ask uh, Mr. Gilligan that because I think he saw it in the Sky Mall catalog. <laughs> well, I... It's it's very useful. I have one on each of my writers' cars, and I <laughs> can track their comings and goings. Uh, yeah, I did. I saw it at Sky Mall on some plane somewhere. It's uh, everything Hank says is. I think that's the exact price of the thing that Hank quotes. It's really? uh, yeah. I mean, it's you know, like Hank says. I mean, that's we live in amazing times technologically, and and you know, and that that in and of itself is a double edged sword. I mean, I don't know. It's interesting technology. It's kind of scary technology, but it's available to anybody with a credit card. So, so when you guys, when you, um, this, when you saw it, you brought it into the writers' room and you said, "Hey, we got to use this for when did you know?" I don't actually own one. I I I I, I mentioned it in the sure writers' room. <laughs> mm. I mentioned it in the writers' room as uh, as, uh, as I don't actually uh, I never actually bought one. Although our prop master Mark Hansen, uh, I think we. You know, contacted the company and said, "Can we use it on the show?" And oh uh, yeah, so that has to be cleared because it's actual device. Yeah, anything, uh, any, any. You can talk about anything if you don't show it, but if you show a real, uh, you know, uh, trademark product, uh, whatnot, the the lawyers get involved, and you gotta you gotta clear stuff with the companies that own the copyrights on things. That's that's with anything. That's with anything we use. I wonder if they knew we were using it as a weapon too. <laughs> <laughs> really smacks Walt. Oh, head. oh, when he throws it, when he throws it at him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah, they don't, they don't hide any of that stuff. They tell, they tell them. Yeah, they'll, yeah, yeah. They'll let them know. Yeah, they, they, we, yeah, we never. Uh, they mislead. don't surprise people. Exactly. They yeah. made an amazing rubber copy of that thing to to throw at Brian's head because his head isn't hard enough to take the real thing. <laughs> Did you try? How do you know until you try? Well. Is that, is that what it was, like foam rubber yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah. It looked great. It looks great. Yeah. It looks, yeah. I didn't even know. And that they looked. loosened his glasses so that when he got hit, it, his glasses flew off his head upon impact. It was They just did an amazing setup for that. Really, <laughs> is, every time I watch it, I flinch a little bit every yeah. time I, yeah. I see it. Yeah, it looks so real. Even really if you know painful. something, I remember as a kid, we had a foam, my brother and I had this foam rubber brick we got at like this amusement park. It looked really real, but it was foam rubber. Mm -hmm. But I even... If you stand there and say, I'm going to throw this at you, you flinch no matter what. It's like, Brian, Brian is uh, good. He didn't... And that's the thing, is that he knows Aaron's going to chuck this thing right in his face. Yeah. And he doesn't give it away. He's, he's able to stand there and not anticipate the impact of this thing, you know, landing between his eyes, which I would have been like, ah. <laughs> yeah. That's way, way harder than people think. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get into the, probably a little later we'll get into the fight. But maybe, yeah. Yeah. What do you well, I'm curious because, you know, Hank takes this thing out and puts it in a computer and we get the whole Google Earth thing. Yeah. What had to be done at that point with Google Earth? I mean, didn't you guys have to get some kind of clearance with Google Earth? Google's not a very powerful or large company, so I don't think we actually <laughs> had, to, had to get their permission, didn't we? I don't, um, yes, we no, did. We, we, yeah, we, got we, their, we, cleared, we, yeah. we cleared all that. And, and the thing that is, if you're showing a real product, you know, there was some – conversation about kind of changing the way that the screen appears on the uh -huh. computer and and um but you you can't i mean if you're if you're showing a real product unless you get their permission you have to show it exactly how it actually works right. so so you know we were we just licensed their actual product and we looked up those actual addresses and they created the screen that Oh, they actually created it so you didn't have to go out and actually it. drive it and get the thing to actually uh i you know i I don't know the answer to that. Uh, uh, the prop department created all the graphics. I think that they created it. Okay. I believe, and I, I, I may be incorrect on this, but uh, Mark and uh, Eric in the prop department, they, they actually they, drove it. I think, or they had a, they had a PA drive it. That's and great. Actually, that, that, <laughs> we, we, uh, yeah, that, uh, that is pretty nuts on accurate as That's far so as funny. the, the, uh, the, the mileage, and the, the mileage yeah. and the, and the way the device and the works and, and, and the actual, 
A point and B points. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. 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 And it tells you how fast they're driving, too. Mm-hmm. Like it says, like, he's going <laughs> like I say, I mean, it's, wow. you got to hats off to the technology. We live in amazing times, but it's like, do you want that used against you? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's scary. I don't know. We, we, we live in amazing times. Well, for good or bad. So. Diane, let me ask you, because you're here and you have to do a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, it, it starts out where, you know, Hank, well, it actually starts out with a flashback. We'll, th- we'll get into that a little bit later. But we start out um, where, you know, Hank is in, the, is in the car with Walt and they're going to get the thing off of Gus's car. And Hank starts singing the Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> Am I going to have to pay for it? If yeah, I don't, don't sing it. Don't sing it. <laughs> So, but that brings up, and I know we've talked about this before in our podcast, but um, we actually do, every time we have any kind of music like that, we actually have to pay for it. So how did that, you know, all get get done? And, you know, you guys, you guys obviously discussed in the writer's room that he was going to sing that song. So at that point, when you guys are trying to break the thing, do you then go to Diane to start work on getting If there's a that song clear. we want, we and we try to get a heads up early on whether it's possible. Can we afford that particular song? Is it totally? If we write this into the script, are we screwing ourselves? I mean, we really wanted him to sing that song, and he was so funny doing it. We just yeah. told we just put a mic on him and said we didn't give him the lyrics. He just oh okay <laughs> said Dean sing sing Eye of the Tire, and he just kind of improvised. That what you hear in the in the show and. Uh, but let me ask you this: um, when, you, when, like, just kind of just briefly go through what we actually have to do to clear some music like that, because you know it's like, I I didn't even realize you know until a few years ago that you know like a lot of people have to get paid like the the publisher of the song and the band like if we had had the yeah. real band sing it then that would be one cost. And then if Dean sings it, is it less money if Dean it, sings it, it? It is, actually. I mean, you know, there's, there's, two, there's two basically pieces to music clearance. And you have to pay the person who wrote the song, and then you have to pay the person who performs the song. So if you license it for one of your actors to sing it, you only have to pay the person who wrote the song. Um, if we had gotten the real song, you know, by the, the actual band, then they get the same amount of money. So it's always it's generally always the same. Whoever whatever side negotiates the best deal uh, oh, for what them. They, what they mean by most favored nations. Most favored nations it's called, yeah. So like the one party may say, "Oh, you can have it for this amount." And if the other party comes back and says, "No, no, 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 you can't have it for that little. You need to pay us this much." Wow. Then the other people usually automatically get bumped up so they get the same amount for wow. both sides. Okay. Gotcha. So wow. There are exceptions to that, but usually 99% of the time, that's that's how it works. So when you told Dean that he was going to do this, was he excited? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he had any real reaction. I mean, he just kind of went with it. And once he started singing it, it was pretty funny. He's, he's he did a great job. Anyway. He's great. He was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just liquored him up and said, sing, you bastard. Sing. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I got. I just want to deviate for a second and ask you a question. It's been. Um, I've read this question a couple of times on different blogs, and I'm curious about the answer myself. It goes back to a couple of episodes. But what is the significance? Is there any significance of that mountain painting that was in the doctor's office from the pilot that is now hanging in Walt's condo? Oh, is there any? Or how? people people notice it? Yeah, oh, that's people cool. are noticing that. Yeah, now, you know what? Uh, uh, we had a different production designer on the pilot in the first couple seasons. A wonderful guy named Rob Wilson King. And on the pilot, he uh, we had that doctor's office, that oncologist office, in which uh, Walt gets that terrible news in the first twenty minutes of the pilot that right. he's got lung cancer. And that was uh, that whole set was actually someone's living room, you know, on a cul-de-sac, two doors over. I mean, literally, you could have thrown a pack of gum from one house to the other. To two doors from the house in which we had the scene uh, where Crazy Eight was training his dog to to, to chew apart the uh, the Bubba. dummy. I miss Bubba. So we're on this. So you know, we <laughs> we try to keep the movements to a minimum. So we. We shot on the same day the scene with Crazy Eight uh, training his dog and Jesse getting waylaid by Crazy Eight and Emilio. And then we went, after lunch, we went over and did the scene with Walt finding out he's got cancer in the living room of this very nice, uh, these very nice folks who let us use their house. In that situation, our production designer, uh, Rob, had to turn a, a person's living room into a doctor's office. And he had to do it for very little money and in very little time. And, you know, one of the things he did was he found this painting. It's actually quite a nice painting and an expensive one and we he rented it for 
you uh, in that scene, all this long-winded story, uh, but, but basically this was a bit of set dressing that he found, and he showed it to me when he initially dressed the set and said, what do you think of all this? But I, I loved that painting, and I loved using it. It's a painting of the Sandia Mountains, which, of course, is a major fixture anytime you're looking east. In Albuquerque, you see the, the Sandia Mountains, very pretty. Because it was specifically written into 306 last yeah. year. It was scripted that that painting is on the wall. You bought the painting? No, I think we're still renting it. Oh, so it doesn't? It's not really in your in your condo. It's, no, it's, it's definitely set, not in my condo. It's still no. set dressing. Oh, I actually yeah, yeah. thought it was in yeah. there. Yeah, it may be a less than satisfying answer. I hope it's not. But the, the God's honest truth of it is, sometimes you just do things because your gut tells you they're interesting. There's no deeper reason, perhaps, for that. It just seemed like an interesting callback or shout out to back to the pilot, uh, an cool. echo back to the pilot. I, I don't think there's a a logical reason for it. It just, it just sometimes your gut tells you to do it. I actually really thought that it was yours, and no, I don't own that painting. <laughs> that no. it was in your house. No, your we home. had to rent it again from the, from <laughs> well, the I had owner. No idea. Yeah. Well, you know, I wanted to talk to Diane a little bit about, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in this one as far as like the chicken ranch, and I know we've talked before in uh, the podcast before that we were working around the chicken ranch being demo- demolished. Oh man, yeah. Oh, and yeah. so now we, I mean, when I was watching the episode. Um, I noticed that there's less buildings and you're kind of having to shoot even around less to, to, I mean, what was that like, Tom? You were out there and no, Diane, they had, they had not started also... tearing it down yet when we shot this one. It really? Was still, yeah. It, it was, was the last, it was... Uh, we booked this production day on the last possible day. Like they, they had started, I think, tearing the, um, some of the outer like metal off of some of the buildings and stuff. Oh, okay. And so, uh, but they hadn't torn everything down and I think. Stu and Michelle and, you know, our producers in Albuquerque managed to work some magic and negotiate with the property owners that they would hold off on demolition until we could get there and shoot this particular day. And this was day one, right? That's right. Day one of the episode. And then I think we shot, and the next day they started started, demolishing everything. Because there is, we go back to the chicken ranch later in the season, but those are, I think those are... Shots that That's, Michelle and uh, that Nelson uh, Craig Stu got. Stu and Nelson and got Stu, those, right. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Stu, Stu Lyons, mm-hmm. uh, our producer, and uh, Nelson Craig, uh, DP, who shot 405 some. 405 and 406. Yeah, yeah. They literally ran out, took a film camera, ran out, and just got footage of these poultry buildings before they actually got bulldozed. Yeah. And we didn't even know at that time what we might need it, need it for because these yeah. guys were still mid-season breaking. And they ran out there with yeah. two cameras or you know, I they think a video camera. Well, they did give them a film camera. They had yeah, yeah, a they film had a, camera and possibly a video camera, and they just ran around and they shot every angle they possibly could get, yeah. trying to think of what could possibly be needed if we have to rebuild this it, with visual effects yeah, later yeah. on. If we need any plates out the window, or if we need references to do a digital set or anything right. yeah. like that. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, and we did use the footage. In, in oh yeah, they saved our bacon. Yeah, so they it, really did. So yeah. it really like it kind of just shows that we don't always. You guys don't always know what's going to happen. I mean, you know, we've talked about it before where you know people think that everything is all planned out, and it, it really is not. Oh, God, I mean, no. things happen, and you just kind of have to adjust, and you get these. You know, you get notices and you say, oh, geez, you know, that's going to affect us. And you and then you dispatch people to go and. Well, you guys talked at one point, I'm sure, on another podcast about Jesse's house. Yeah, we've right? talked about and Jesse's oh, yeah. house. Same kind of thing. That kind of yeah. thing happens all the time. Saul's. Uh, Saul's. Well, Tuco. <laughs> we lost Saul's. Tuco. I mean, uh, some we're, we're just now we're talking about locations, but actors, too. Yeah. Uh, 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 Raymond Cruz, who played Tuco. I think our original plan was for Tuco to be the bad guy throughout season two, two. but uh, he was unavailable to us. His agent said, "Well, you know, sorry, but he's doing the closer, and we and we we can get you we can get you in for like two more days of shooting, and then basically you're, on the weekend. On the we we had to shoot. Did we shoot <laughs> on a weekend? At least one of those days it was on a weekend. Yeah, I think. Yeah. He, yeah, he flew in on a Sunday or something to do this stuff for episode. 201. Yeah, and which was very nice of him. He's yeah. a great guy, and yeah. we enjoyed yeah, he's great. working with him. But uh, it's like uh, the character said in last week's episode, uh, the old saying, men plan and God laughs. I mean, you can we, <laughs> right. we do our best to figure this right. stuff out as, as in, in, in as great a detail as possible, as early as possible. And then the whole thing, then the rug gets pulled out from under you. But then hopefully better things happen from there. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Am I am I am I overstating it here to say that if if Tuco had had stayed on as a bad guy, maybe Gus Fring would have never probably existed? not. Probably not. Yeah. 
So I wasn't here in season two, but I'm just that's right. As yeah. a viewer, I'm just and knowing how the show was put together, probably not. Yeah. Wow. I mean, not to make it sound like we're just making it up as we go along. We're we're doing our we best are. to. <laughs> 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 but you know, the life throws you curveballs. So yeah. and you know. So. Well, um, Diane, you know when they um, when the writers came to you, you know when they said, okay, we're going to have Gus being shot at by a sniper. Um, and what, at, at that point, what is your, you know, position and what do you have to, you know, put into place before they start that kind of thing going? Yeah. I mean, most of, most of these things kind of happen during that concept meeting, production meeting stage, like when we're in prep that we have eight days to prep every episode and we start with a meeting where we run through that script and Vince explains what he wants. And a lot of it is, it's really figuring it out as you go. It's doing different estimates from different ways to approach it, whether we do visual effects or special effects or, you know, stunts and all of that kind of gets put together and different people come up with different ideas of how to approach it. And um, it comes down to what is going to be the most cost effective way to get us the shot that we want. And oh, so for, for this, um, that it, all the stuff with the shootout at the chicken ranch is, you know, it's it was done with the intention of being 100% practical. Yeah. yeah um, we had a few misfires. But there's... Pun intended? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pun. Um, you know, so we, we just, from a post perspective, we look at it like, okay, great, you guys are going to, you know, do this with, you know, squibs and special effects and stunts and whatever you guys do your magic, you know, out yeah. there in Albuquerque. And then when the footage comes back to us and we start putting it together, sometimes you discover that there are timing problems with squibs not going off, maybe yeah. necessarily exactly where you want them to be, or things, uh, you know, not being clean enough or, you know, stuff not being scary enough. Yeah, yeah. And that's where we come in. So in this particular episode, um, that moment where uh, one of Gus's guys gets shot right in front of Jesse. Um, they had a practical rig that shot the blood onto the truck, but it was very large <laughs> and because they wanted a really big hit, right? They wanted a big, bloody, shocking, you know, white, uh, on the white truck, right. big red, you know, brain matter, everything. Yeah. Right? And, um, what did it look like? A little bit like a red fire extinguisher, yes. like spraying. Speaking of misfires, that thing blew before the camera was rolling, too. So oh, it we, did? We, yeah. I didn't know that. It went off, and we had to clean the truck. And, oh, my and, God, I didn't know you that. Know, and, it's, I mean, it's, and thank God the crew was so amazing because we just moved so quickly. You can't even – yeah, the, I mean, the, when it went off that time – I mean, it, it looks great, and the final result is great, but unfortunately because of the volume of spray that was needed to get – the reaction they wanted and the brain matter and everything. In the end, there there was this big red spray that looked very artificial. And it was in the footage, so we, what we had to do was remove the spray. So initially we started thinking, we'll just paint out the spray and the this, this stain will be where it is, and that's fine. But in order to get the spray out, we had to completely remove everything and wow. then put it back in. Because, you know, once you start kind of messing with how it looks organically it becomes easier to just start over mm. so the bottom part of it is actually practical but we had to replace most of the top part of it as uh, how it lands and we had to rebuild animation for it landing and wow. spraying and spattering that's and a big like deal that. it was it was it was a very complicated shot it wow. was a very complicated shot yeah, it just sometimes things work out that way. Uh, uh, yeah. We have a wonderful uh, special effects uh, department who do great work, but just sometimes you're, you're running for your life on these things, and sometimes yeah. things don't quite work out. But but more often than not, they do work out. Yeah, nine, they really do. It's not, yeah, it's definitely ten. not a knock on them yeah. because they do phenomenal yeah. work. Yeah. It, it, but you ten. don't know sometimes, you know, we have multiple cameras shooting. Uh, I'm sure you guys had three cameras that day, at least two every, most of the time, and Probably three that day. Probably that day. And yeah. and you don't know what angle is going to end up in yeah. the final cut. Yeah. And so if if the director's intention was to see it from one angle where you maybe didn't see that spray, yeah. mm -hmm. but Vince gets in and, and he starts cutting it and he decides he wants to see it from another angle that maybe mm -hmm. wasn't intended to be used, um, then you have a problem. So, I mean, it's just, it, you never know how it's going to turn out in the final edit and you have to kind of just make things work as, as it 
as it comes together. Cool. The, the right way for the show. What was, about the bullets on the on the ground? Was that? It was like, all squibs. But again, they uh, some of the some of the takes, they trigger it, and instead of one going off for whatever reason, they'd all go off at once, <laughs> or one they go one two, and we I think. Did you have to erase any of those? Uh, no. In the end, uh, the way it was cut, those all looked great. Um, yeah. But we did add a little bit of kind of digital debris to make it look. The dirt. The, dirt, the dirt. Yeah, wow. like dirt and rocks and stuff like flying up kind of towards Gus. Wow. Just to make it look. Uh, St- stuff that our, our special effects guys could have added in themselves yeah. in, in pra- reality, yeah. except that. You can't. You could. I mean, they could make it happen, except you don't want we had a rocks don't want and debris. Rocks well, at, you don't want rocks and debris Giancarlo. flying into it. Yeah, you don't want <laughs> stuff flying into the actor's face. So yeah. there's certain things that you can. Yeah. That we often augment digitally that that we could certainly do practically, but at a risk to the actors, yeah. which which we would never do. So. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's kind of where yeah, because because we can make it look much more dangerous and scary yeah. with no damage to anyone, you know? Right. So that's kind of what we're And I haven't said that. I mean, I don't think digital stuff, it's amazing technology, but I don't think it's going to replace on on no. set special effects anytime soon. No. And we're, we're lucky to have such a great Yeah, and, on, and, and, and I think that crew. that's a reason why our stuff turns out so great is because we try to do as much as we possibly can practically. Yeah, that's And great. then we just do little cleanup work on our, on our end. And sometimes it's super easy and sometimes it's – Stuff that you don't plan for, but yeah, I mean, our, those special effects guys do such phenomenal work, and then we just, you know, take it to that next level. It's a team effort. It all is, around. Yeah. Great folks all yeah. around. Speaking of uh, great folks, we got to talk about uh, Terry McDonough, who directed this episode, Terry. directed the hell out of it. He is British. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's that's a downside. But other yeah. than that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Terry is uh, Terry was awesome to work with. Just amazing sense of humor and really, I mean, just a great eye. For shots, I love the close-up he gets of the orchid, and yeah. you know, at it with yeah. Skylar out of focus. That's a good one. And the cactus, and the, way that the, the cactus of the car around. driving. I like yeah. that he plays that with focus. Red thing ab- above Gus, I don't even know what it is. There's oh, like the, the lamp, the hanging the lamp. Thing. Yeah, I love yeah. that angle. Yeah. That's really cool. He's got a great eye. He used to be a camera operator, and uh, this is his third episode he's directed for us. He did. did better call Saul. He did. He did better. Call Saul. He he introduced the character of. He did. Uh, uh, bit by dead bee, right? Yeah, bit by dead, bit by yeah, dead yeah. bee, which uh, was when Walt go, is, spends most of the episode in the hospital after his so-called quote unquote fugue nudism. state. His, his nudism. His nudism. In the, yeah, in the it, market. That's right. Terry directed him uh, naked in that uh, <laughs> supermarket. Yeah, Terry's a good guy. He's a very sweet guy. Very talented. Cool. Speaking yeah. of nudism, you know, four oh five, we had some nudism, but we had to cut it out. We had Walt's ass again, and now you're gonna look for it in the DVD. It will be there yeah. on the DVD. Yeah. Right. What, what, what was the story? Post-sex scene, Walt goes, walks into the bathroom, and you see, we had a nice, beautiful shot of uh, Brian's ass. The moon. And uh, the moon. for some reason, it was okay back in 203, but in 405, they because it was after sex, we had to really cut it out. Yeah. Really? It's, you know. And then, wow. but, and then we have this episode. We have our one fuck for the season. Somebody, you know, Jesse says, get the fuck out of my... I wish I, I wish I had one fuck a season. Oh. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> We're both wearing green today, by the way. The folks just listening to the audio podcast aren't gonna aren't gonna get the full effect here. <laughs> um, like the Bobsy twins. Here. <laughs> You know what, Vince? I asked you this um, a couple of uh, about a week ago. We were working on uh, editing one of the shows, and and I asked you this, and I wanted to ask you anyway on on the podcast. Um, you know, it's it's become sort of a, a symbol symbolic thing that's happened here, but I don't think it was intentional. But I'd like you to talk a little bit about it. Is basically now you've got you've got a big chess game going on this uh, this season you've basically got two kings and they're actually white and black kings in fact one of them's name is white i mean how was that was that i know that you said before that wasn't intentional but it's become kind of interesting i mean what what do you has that ever come up in the writer's room at all or have you ever given any thought about the fact that now you have you know a white king and a black king literally no, I mean when when we speak of black and white, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that that was a, a purposeful decision because the truth is when we when we were coming up with the character of Gustavo Fring, it was a, we didn't even have in mind any particular race. We just Giancarlo Esposito was absolutely hands down the best actor for the for the role and just crushed it in his audition. But I think the the chess the chess uh, analogy is very appropriate because. Uh, this is a real chess match that's been going on this whole season between these between we've these always, two. We've always talked about Gus being a grandmaster chess player and Walt trying to 
to match him move for move or just trying to anticipate anything that, <laughs> that Gus does. And I, you know, I don't think we've ever talked about Gus's race, except the only time it ever came up was uh, when we were trying to decide where Gus was from. And we, yeah. we landed on Chile. And I guess the population of Chile is uh, there aren't many black people in, in in Chile so that yeah, I'm sure there's some yeah but yeah. there are there's enough there that you could believe that yeah you, it, it was the only time a race ever came up yeah. in discussion about about Gus because where where he was from might have mattered but. you want yeah. to mention that you think it's like like a Spassky Fisher kind of thing yeah I mean to me this is uh the big famous 1972 chess match in in Iceland between uh, Boris Spassky and Bobby Fisher and and you know Except this season, it's Walt is the crazy Bobby Fisher. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, actually, yeah. Except for the fact he's he's got the Bobby Fisher crazy down pat, <laughs> but other than that, he's he's more spasky in this match. It would seem like so far, yeah. Um, you know, Tom, I was going to ask you just from the writers' um, um, aspect, how do scripts get assigned to you guys? How? D- um, it pretty much has gone in order of when a writer has joined the show, I feel like. I mean, Vince would, could speak to this better than I can because he pretty much makes the decisions about <laughs> who writes when. But I, pretty, uh, from also what, what everybody eats yeah. and wears. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so, uh, so I came on in season three, so I, sort of, I was at the end of the rotation. And then when Jenny Hutchison moved up uh, from script co- uh, coordinator to writer, she came after me in, in the order. And then this year, because Peter Gould was directing – uh, they, we wanted more time with him in the room to help us break things. So he, uh, because he was going to direct, he just got moved to the end of the rotation. So uh, we pretty much have gone yeah. in order uh, with just this, you know, Peter sort of being shuffled a little bit in the deck. It's kind of like a repeating batting order in baseball, and it's based kind of like like Tom said on seniority. So uh, yeah. So so how does the the, how does the notes process go then? Like what? Like when you write a script, does everybody like weigh in after you write it? Not, or? not on this show. Uh, I mean, I've been on other shows where we sort of everyone sits around and, and uh, tears the script apart. <laughs> you know, or or adds. You know, especially on a comedy show, you 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 know, everybody has a funny line they want to put in, and, and things are debated. Uh, Vince Vince pretty much takes over the uh, uh, the revisions on the script. He'll he'll go through the script and and do a one on one with the writers and, and figure Is that out like. What we want to change? Yeah, he'll really make it difficult. He'll, no, no. It's does uh, he like have a red pencil and says F? <laughs> funny, apply twenty yourself. percent funnier. All right, twenty <laughs> percent funnier. What about when you write, Vince? Does everybody get to weigh in or no? Or? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yes, everybody. Uh, as uh, you know, uh, yes, everybody. Uh, you, you know what? I, um, I I confess at a certain point to not seeking out folks's opinions probably as as actively as i should but tom tom for instance is very good about uh uh doing it without being asked i'll speak for myself but i, I i'll cast it a broader net here i think it's 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 a bit of a stereotype uh, an earned stereotype that writers don't love notes and there and it is also a stereotype that writers will say I want every note you got. Give it all to me. Be brutally, be brutally honest. honest. And the more someone says be brutally honest, the less they want you to be brutally honest. <laughs> that's just that's just human nature. But and it, notes are like uh, medicine. Uh, it doesn't necessarily taste good going down, but uh, but it, it helps and it makes you it makes your script healthier for it. And <laughs> uh, so I you know I, I probably don't actively because sometimes it's a matter of just running out of time, and and also sometimes it's because I get lazy and I and I. If I don't have to get notes, I probably do not pursue them as actively as I could. But but it is helpful when Tom or any of the other writers say a good note, you know instantly. Yeah, I should do that. Yeah, what's different about this show than other shows too is I feel like more on this show we talk about every single detail. So that there, you know, the notes aren't ever that painful because it's usually just dialogue tweaks or making things clearer. Yeah, that's true. And uh, you know, everything is in the cards that are up on the board here. So. You know the scripts yeah. generally match. You know, yeah. there's no big surprises when Vince gets a script. There's nothing that he looks at and says, "What the hell happened?" <laughs> Usually, I hope not. Well, Just get mad when they don't wear the clothes I told them to wear. Well, what happens though? <laughs> what happens like if you have a scene in in I one like of your scripts? Plaid. 
What what That's happens right. when you have a scene in one of your scripts that it doesn't like you don't have that much? Um... Just to get back to the clothes, you know, I acted in his student film, and he made me wear a clown outfit the night before we shot. Even though he's supposed to be a businessman, it was weird. <laughs> anyway, that's how. Even back in college. And by the way, where, like what the hell are you ripping me off? I don't know. I woke up this look. morning and put this green on. And yeah. Then, uh, anyway. I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, I was going to ask if you have like something in your script that you may not be as familiar with. Like I don't know who brought up the IRS audit, but how did that come about? Did you have extra help? Yeah. Well, I mean, for the research on that, I mean, just to get it right, I, I sort of wrote a scene what I thought it would be. I did a little IRS research based on myself, and then uh, Gordon. Hooked me up with his mom. Gordon, Gordon Smith that sounds so wrong. <laughs> yeah, it does sound wrong <laughs> in all the right hot, ways, my hot friend. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon is Vince's assistant. Gordon Vince's Smith, assistant. my, my uh, yeah. excellent assistant. We got some outside research help about how an, uh, an audit would happen, and uh, yeah, it, his, it worked out wow. great. His mom back in Michigan. Your mom is an IR, uh, is an attorney who who represents folks who have uh, tax I, issues. When the uh, when the plot line came through, Tom Tom asked me or. I offered that my mom is a tax attorney, and uh, I actually did the um, the the bit that we did with Saul, like the put a dollar in my pocket. I gave, I sent my mom a dollar, <laughs> and she was took, she took it super seriously, and she kept everything. She did she give tell you a receipt? Or no, but I mean, like she would not tell my dad anything about what she was talking about or wow. anything like that. She's like, no, I'm I'm giving this advice on. Did the, she report that dollar to the IRS? I, you know, I don't know. She may have to now. <laughs> Your mom's a wonderful She'll write it off, I think, yeah, okay. probably as, as pro bono work. Well, but it was a big, huge help. Because, but yeah, so uh, she she because I had it. written it one way, and then she she said you know it makes a lot more sense the way it actually ended up in the show. So she was crucial in getting that you know realistic. Yeah. Cool. She's a wonderful lady, and she helped out a lot. And yeah. uh, thank you for your mom. And I'm sorry I made the joke about <laughs> about yeah. hooking up with my mom. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, I said he started. It's, it's, it's but, true. But she was very I'm very helpful. Sorry. You're enough. I know. I think I wrote a scene and then gave it to you, and you sent it to your mom, and she kind of said, "Oh, maybe it would be more like this." And uh, yeah, it turned uh, it turned out the original way that we were sort of thinking that Skyler would explain this would actually work in Ted's favor. It would have make him pay much less in taxes, mm -hmm. not owe. Yeah, taxes. we didn't want that. So we had to sort of come oh, up yeah. with a way that was plausible with all the details that had been laid down mm -hmm. to that point. Wow. And, uh, well, you know what? Yeah. That brings me to my next question, Gordon. You should sit down. Because I'm curious, I'm just curious. I mean, oh, Gordon, um, as far as as far as your background, you came to us in the third season, mm -hmm. season three, and you started out sort of learning to be Vince's assistant, right? Sort of, and now this year you've taken over being Vince's assistant, right? And he just has you do crazy, crazy thing. No, I'm just kidding. He does, but I'm not going to talk about it. But Gordon, you are an aspiring writer. You've mm -hmm. actually done the stuff that appears on the AMC website. I yeah, I've written the two um, like graphic graphic novel, novel game things, right? Things. And so, um, what when you wanted to do that, um, how did you pitch that? Did you pitch that, or did somebody come to you and say do this? Um, actually, Melissa Bernstein, one of our producers, came to me and said they were thinking about something along those lines. Would I be interested? I said yes. You better say yes. Of course. No, I mean I was. I love I love comic books and I love the show. So I was like, this is great. Then I talked to the AMC digital folks and pitched some ideas and found one that they liked and then brought it to Vince and Melissa and the producers here and said, you know, this is what we're thinking about and got it approved. And cool. Went from there. Yeah. So when you were writing all that, how much was Vince involved in all of that? Um, it depended. The first game, we, uh, Vince was much more involved just because there was we didn't know what what it actually was or even how it was going to relate to the show um i think in the end for amc and for for the show we've sort of decided that it's stuff on the web especially those games is like it's in the universe it's pl something that plausibly and hopefully is true to the characters as as they are on the show but it's not stories that literally take place in the timetable of the series we, we take some liberties i'm sure we're probably a little bit outside of what could possibly have fit in but they're supposed to be stories that feel like they're part of this show that somebody could have experienced at some point that in the first game it was hank a case that hank might have had that was similar or had the same feel as something on the show and for the second one about jesse it was harder to find something that we we could use with jesse just like a, a window of time that might work that could possibly have happened to him cool so but this is one of the ways that vince has gotten you know the young you younger writers new writers involved in the show mm -hmm. so it's like you know because um last year like you said um jenny 
uh, was uh, a writer's assistant in the writer's room. And then she moved up and got a script, and then now she's a full-fledged member of the writing staff. And mm. and so you are actually also being given these little no, yeah, I mean, assignments. Whether, whether they want to or not, I don't know. But everyone here seems to be really great about, like, giving opportunities to to people. Like, you know, they, they – are very encouraging and you learn I've tried to so stop much. it from happening. I, I was specifically sure. thinking of Tom when I, I yeah. said that. But yeah, Tom's done his best to uh, destroy me, but um, <laughs> he's failed to... Not to just, not just professionally, but his marriage. I yeah, no, to that too. Uh, well, wreck, but any, uh, anything he's just too strong. He's too strong. Well, you know anything what? he can do. So What I also wanted to ask um, you is, what is Vince's writer's notes process when you have to write a script and you know what it well, how do you do you just write a writer's draft and then you give it to Vince and then and then what happens yeah Vince will read it and is uh, that a private meeting yeah some some shows you do a group meeting where all the writers chime in but uh, on the show Vince uh, likes to go through and give specific notes to the writers and uh, we make those changes is it a tough process no it's pretty painless is he like going I know you can do better than this <laughs> with a big red pencil no no it's very apply easy. yourself <laughs> <laughs> funnier, twenty percent funnier. Twenty percent funnier. What, what, what about, twenty to twenty-two percent. Well, let me ask you this: When you write a script, then what happens? Do they get to weigh in? I give myself a big hug. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> oh, you devil, you talented <laughs> devil. No, I, 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 um, I don't know. I just. I mean, one of the good things is, is that during the, I mean, the breaking process is so specific. We talk about everything. And we know everything that's supposed to happen. So usually, when you veer off course, it has something to do with. There's usually some dialogue changes, and but the structure of the script doesn't often change. I don't think in the. Sometimes you read it and you get a sense, oh, this didn't work like the way we thought it would. But yeah, very rarely. We, we've been very fortunate. We we spend a hell of a lot of time, uh, all of us together. There's seven writers, counting myself. We spend a, a lot of time together, uh, figuring out eight ways from Sunday. You know what the plot is for that particular week's episode so all that time pays dividends because we you know, we, you know you've, you've been on other shows that i hadn't been on and I, i've been on pretty much every show you've been on you've been on more shows than i have actually but but i think we've both had experiences in other shows where you get to the point that the script is written and and then everyone sort of agrees oh man this one is kind of messed up mm -hmm. this one's structurally kind of screwy and we got to go back to square one we've never had to like you just said well, i don't think we've ever had to do that right. on this show we've had maybe one scene in an episode that was a little hinky uh, structurally i don't mean how good the writing was mm -hmm. i mean structurally we we realize later this doesn't quite get us to where we need to go but fortunately for us uh, we've never had to even come close to throwing out a whole script no. which does happen sometimes on tv shows no that does happen with yeah right. wow hey, let's talk about uh, how great anna gunn is in that irs scene yeah. she's very funny that's one of the funniest scenes we've ever done. I think <laughs> I you, love that when scene. When you wrote it, did you and you um, and you, I guess, get you know, put the script out? Did you get any phone calls from her or anything? Or I didn't. I didn't get ahead. But on the day, she she, I knew she was happy. Actually, we shot a uh, another scene the day earlier, and she was. I think she was talking about. I remember her talking about uh, looking forward to doing that scene. So I thought was it a, was really funny. I really enjoyed it's, it. It's one of my favorite scenes of the season. I, I just I, she is so good in that scene. She's like the quicken. When I put it into the quicken, the quicken. Uh, do you have the quicken? It is the, <laughs> the best. best. <laughs> it is the best. I love the way she does that. She has a she very funny so delivery. Funny. Yeah, she did. Uh, she did it multiple times, and each time she had a little something different to each take, and uh, it was really just uh, it was just a lot of fun to watch her. And the actor who plays uh, special agent. Um, Rob, uh, Rob Brownstein. Rob Brownstein, uh, who did a great job. He is such a great foil to her in that yeah. scene. He's such a great straight man. You and Moira wrote a great script. This is a really Thank good you. one. And uh, and Chris Cousins, who plays uh, Ted. Ted, it's Beneke's great scene. Back, yeah. Ted Beneke. Yeah. He's. I love his expressions. He he just <laughs> it's just it's this slow blink he does when she walks in. <laughs> And he, he, there's a quick if you you got to look quick to catch it, but he, he checks out her cleavage at a certain point. And the and the actor who played the IRS special agent, yeah, Rob Brownstein. Rob Brownstein did a great job. Very good. Very, very good. Very well, funny. Well, you know, I guess we should kind of uh, uh, start wrapping this up. But I I wanted to talk about the the big fight at the end. Um, I'm sure that that was something that you guys wanted to do from the very beginning of the show. You wanted to kind of get them, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't together. say that. No, I don't. Not from the very beginning. I mean. You mean, what do you mean, the very beginning of the series? The, se the, season. The, 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 the season. Oh, the season, that they'd wind up in a big, I don't know, did, were we thinking of a big fist fight at the beginning of the season? I don't, I don't, I don't remember think it coming so. up. 
I don't think it was. At some point, yeah. you knew that you know Gus's plans. Once we once, you, once we realized Gus's plan would sort of work as far as tearing them apart and getting Jesse, Jesse's loyalty over to him, that there would be so there would be a blow up. There would be a blow up, and uh, you know, I'm glad it happened in this episode. <laughs> yeah. Moira got to write that scene, and, and uh, I was there for the shooting of it. And it was just our stunt guys and the actors. They were. I was sitting back in a chair drinking a latte or something, watching them fight over and over again. How, how long did it take to film that? They did it in a day, but it was, wow. a, it was yeah, it was, was a that, lot. Was that, that whole scene was one day? That's yeah. a lot, because yeah. I noticed all the angles and the overheads. And oh, no, all Terry kind of and the crew like huge. did an amazing job covering that. Thing. Now, when you say one day, is that including that long dialogue scene leading up to it? Is it is that the whole scene, in other words, from when, when Walt first knocks on the door and enters... <laughs> To, My memory may be faulty, but I, I remember that being all the same day. We did that all that same day. Because wow. i got to say, one of my favorite scenes in that se- one of my favorite shots, if you will, in that sequence, in that scene, is is not even in the fight itself. It's prior to the fight is that long one When I say one that means just one uninterrupted shot without an added Of Aaron in it, just pitching. Of Aaron, of, uh, Walt sits down in a wide shot, and, and Jesse uh, basically says, I got it. They're asking me to go to Mexico, and I'm not you, man, and how help me out. That that shot, that damn shot is like two minutes long, three minutes long. It's yeah. great. No, it's, it's totally awesome, and it just shows how wrong – we writers can be sometimes because I'm one of the people who pitch that, boy, Gus should be delivering this. We should see Gus deliver. We should, we should see the man delivering what the plan is. And we, do we really want to watch Jesse kind of regurgitate everything Gus want? And it totally, totally works amazingly. So. Oh, that's yeah. right. We did go re- back and forth on that. Yeah. I, I'd forgotten that. We, you, you never know till you, till you, till you, uh, till you see it all done. If you're making the right choice, we we did go back and forth. Just and, because of yeah. the and the way it worked out with Walt sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting for Jesse to say, "I saw Gus, I saw Gus." Yeah, and he's waiting. He's feeding him that rope. He knows the he's truth. He's seen the bug, and yeah, he's yeah. just all Jesse has to do is say, "Yeah, I saw Gus," and I didn't twice or just admit it. But Jesse's so scared of, you know, because he can't bring himself to kill another another good person. He can't. You know, Walt's asking him again to do this horrible, horrible thing to kill a human being, and he can't bring himself to do it. So he just lies to Walt. I didn't see. I didn't see Gus. I didn't see Gus. Well, I, I haven't seen him. And then it, once the truth comes out, it just explodes in a great way. Well, this is a good thing to to, to chew over because it's like, I don't think he's had. And this is up to the viewer, as always. It's up to the viewer to decide. I, I, what I love about the way our viewers perceive this show is they, we try to leave. We try to leave things as open as possible, and yet hopefully be tell a satisfying story. But I like it when audiences have. I, I very often I like it a lot when people have a slightly different take on it than even I do. But for me, for whatever it's worth, one person's opinion truly not worth anything more than anybody else's in this case. I think Jesse really has not truly had an opportunity to poison him yet. I mean, mm-hmm. I buy his argument. There was one pot of stew. I mm-hmm. do too. Uh, what's he going to do? But why? Yeah, but he does lie to Walt. And I, I oh, mean, well, I that's we, different. We yeah, see, that's we've seen him so tortured over the Gell killing that, uh, to me, as a, as a viewer on the other side of this coin, I, I feel like he can't bring himself to do it. Oh, his yeah. loyalty is yeah. shifting, and he's wondering, yeah. you know, in, in the great scene in uh, 407 when it's like, what, do, what is Gus seeing me? And, and Mike says, you have loyalty, but it's for the wrong guy. Yeah. There's a question there. Oh, mm-hmm. look who's in! Uh, <laughs> hey. 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 hey! Hey! What's uh, going on with you? Uh, it's Aaron Paul. Aaron Paul, Paul. just Ooh. Aaron surprise. Paul walks into the room. Surprise, yeah. dude. Yeah. Hey. How have you been? Oh, I've been really good. Oh, God, it's great to see you. I know, I miss you. I miss you too, honey. I you really know, you, do. You've been doing just such fabulous work. Oh, shut, shut no, you up. Have. No, you really it's have. True. No, it's you. No, it's all you. It's all you. What is this? <laughs> We're not sure. In that little RV. Oh, that is Lego incredible. RV. There's a little Lego RV with little Lego men. With on bullet top. holes. Oh, there's, there's, there's and, you. and then there's a, a little picture of me on the face and a little picture of and Brian. And the bullet holes in the door. What yeah, oh, it's so it. great. I love it. <laughs> hey, you know, Aaron, I, I just, I'm so glad that you're here because, um, you know, I, the one thing I wanted to bring up about this episode was this big, gigantic fight. You know, this is the first time. I think this is the first time that you don't get beat up, but Walt gets beat up. That's right. <laughs> Jesse takes some some legs in the fight. Yes, but, but Jesse I, does the handing think, out of the beating. I think Jesse uh, uh, gives more than he receives in this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, 
that sounds so sexy. Pretty, <laughs> gives a pretty good accounting of himself. Right? Yeah, I mean, Je- Jesse does. He does get a bit of a somewhat of a beating. I mean, he gets thrown around, but uh, we <laughs> we had a lot of fun, Brian and I, with that scene. Did you guys rehearse that? Um. Oh yeah. Uh. Yeah. 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 No, we actually rehearsed that quite a quite a bit. Um. And we shot it quite a bit. I mean, we shot then, the hell out of that. And you guys, you guys have stuntmen, <laughs> big stunt long takes. And um, yeah, no, we we did have st- stuntmen. Like, um, I mean, the 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 shots that you see of Jesse like flipping over and landing on his his face, pretty much, um, <laughs> was not me. Thank God, because uh, he got um, he got destroyed. I'm, I feel so. I forget um, his. I'm sorry. It's not so. Nick. His Nick is. Normally, my stunt guy, but it was this new. He's incredible. Anyways, um, he was he was new to the show. Yeah, he, was new to he the did show. a great job because yeah. it is really that it's that wide shot. You pop wide, and Walt throws Jesse, just slams him right on the floor. And yeah, that, that the stunt guys are just really amazing yeah. what they do. But he did. So did he get hurt doing that? Um, no, he was he was good. Yeah, I mean, good. he he acted like he was fine. Um, but they <laughs> really like, and then the the shot, um, where you know. Actually, I haven't seen the the fight. I haven't seen this episode yet, so I'm assuming this this take it is in there. Yeah, uh, the shot where Jesse gets slammed into the the, the shelves, mm-hmm. um, and they all break. <laughs> I definitely was getting slammed into the shelves, but there was there was a couple takes where the stunt guys were just like killing each other, yeah. and I felt like Brian and I were killing it after each take. You guys were we exhausted, could, and, we and then Terry not. McDonough, the director, would say. All right, let's do another one. Yeah, all right, let's, uh, okay, well, put up those shelves, um, super glue them back together, and let's do another one. Have some fun with this one. So, wait, you guys, did you do this, how many days did this take, you guys? Um, we, we did it in one day. The fight was a day, and then the scene where you're pitching to Walt, oh, plan right. to go to Mexico, was a day earlier. Right. So that was not all in one day. No, 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 the fight was definitely right, a day gotcha. on its own. The gotcha. fight, the, uh, that was the only thing. The scheduled, fight in right? the teaser was on one day. There's yeah. just a blood dripping on the glasses and the close of the shoes. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, and then the the. Uh, but after each day, <laughs> Brian and I, because it we was would, exhausting we, just to watch. We it. would look at each other and just <laughs> laugh because it, it's. I mean, it is. It's fun. You know, it's yeah. so much fun. And just for the viewers at home, if you just do the Star Trek fight theme when you're watching the, it just elevates the whole scene. <laughs> Wait, that, 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 that song's not on the show? No. no, you have to no. have to do it on your own. Oh. You're going to get the rights to it. It's sort of like, you know, pl- watching The Wizard of Oz and putting on uh, Dark, Dark Side, Side of the Moon. Moon. Dark Side of the Moon. It's kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly like that. A little better, but... Pretty much um, exactly. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, no. Well, I hate to break this up, but uh, unfortunately, Aaron, it's so good for you. Can you join us? Can you stay for the next one? Yeah. Okay, absolutely. cool. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, okay, so uh, I hate to do this, but we should wrap this up and... You know. I have more to say. <laughs> you always have Stop more to say. Stop stifling Tom. Thank you so much, uh, Tom. Thank Diane, you, Kelly. You Gordon, beautiful man. You. Aaron. <laughs> and as always, Vince, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Kelly. Hey, thank Great you, job thank as you, always. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks a lot. And uh, we'll see you next week. Let's go break bad. All right.